body image, the thoughts, feelings, or perceptions of the aesthetics or attractiveness of one's own body. And if you're watching this video, there's a high chance that you have or will struggle with body image. Because a lot of us do. In fact, a study in the UK found that one third of adults felt anxious or depressed because of concerns over their body image. One in five felt shame. No matter your identity, we all have a relationship with our bodies and how they are perceived in the world. So welcome to Change Series 4, Body Image, where we try to find out how our body image got so messed up, starting with diet culture. Diet culture is a set of beliefs that worships thinness and equates being thin to our health, worthiness, and moral value. It tells us that in order to gain a higher status, we have to spend money, time, and energy to shrink our bodies. And this creates a sense of shame within our personal choices and how we treat our bodies. It's unfortunate because most people spend their entire lives thinking that something is fundamentally wrong with them because they do not fit the impossible ideal. It all gets even more serious when diet culture reinforces a type of discrimination called weight stigma. This is discrimination based on body weight or body size, and it can show up in a lot of ways. It can be being ridiculed, ignored, or excluded. And weight stigma is reported at rates comparable to racial discrimination. Weight discrimination negatively affects health. A study shows that weight discrimination doubles the 10-year risk of a high allostatic load. This is the combined effect of chronic stressors on the cardiovascular, metabolic, and nervous systems. Now consider this. Many of the health risks associated with being in a larger body can actually be explained by weight stigma. And yet diet culture uses these health risks to scare us into engaging with its system of beliefs and harmful practices. But I know what you're thinking. Diet culture works sometimes, right? Have you ever heard of this yo-yo thing? Yo-yo dieting or weight cycling? You go on a diet or weight loss plan, you lose some weight, see results. The plan gets harder and harder to maintain, your body fights back and you regain the weight. This is super common. In fact, one third to two thirds of all dieters end up regaining more than they lost on the diet. It turns out weight cycling also negatively affects our health. It increases the likelihood of binge eating, increases the risk of mortality, chronic inflammation. This doesn't sound so good, does it? My story actually started when I became a body pump instructor and um, I just felt like I didn't really fit the part. And so I decided that I needed to make a change in order to um, kind of be more of a physical role model for my participants. And um, yeah, I remember digging out a, a, a blank journal or what I thought it was a blank journal to start tracking my food. Um, and I actually found that I had uh, written in it when I was about 14. And at the time I was uh, 34. <laughs> So uh, I, I realized that I had been doing this to myself for um, well over half my life. I uh, felt like I had kind of fallen into that diet culture trap. I think when you're stuck in diet culture, um, the overriding feeling is that you're not enough, no matter what you do. I, I think that for most of my life, that limiting belief has been there, that I'm not enough um, because of the way I look or because of, you know, um, whatever that number is on the scale. This diet culture lie that if our bodies just looked like the ideal, then we would be worthy, then we would be valuable, then we would belong. It only causes pain for so many of us. So what do we do? How can we change? Practicing mindfulness could help. Mindfulness is when you are paying attention to the present moment on purpose without judgment. The last word is key. Perhaps you're judging yourself, feeling guilt or shame around your food choices, or you might punish yourself 
through exercise for making such food choices. Step one in healing is observing these thoughts, feelings, and behaviors without judging. Another step is meditation around self-acceptance. We have added beautiful meditations around this topic on our platform. And lastly, at least for this video, we can take a test to see our own implicit bias and find out how strong our biases are against different bodies. Are you brave enough? Just Google Harvard Implicit Bias Test to take this test today. So, we have taken our first steps into recognizing why our body image is so messed up. But keep watching, because in the next episode, we're gonna dig into the history of these things a little bit more. We'll see you again soon.